Welcome back to Project SureFun. Join us as Barry and Sam follow up the wet sanding process by compounding the hull, aiming to bring back that showroom shine. Barry visits with Aubrey Brother Boats to pick up brand new swim platforms. Linex of Sarasota applies a durable spray-on coating to the aluminum work of the boat. And the team at Birdsall Marine stretches new canvas on the freshly sprayed tea top and more. Okay, so the wet sanding is behind us and as you saw from the process and from our shirts here is a little bit of a messy process. Now, on camera you saw we wiped it down using our Sirius Marine Cleaner to get all of that slurry off of the boat. If you're working outside in your driveway or somewhere else, obviously you can wash the boat down using a hose, soap and water, a little bit easier, but here in the studio we did the spray down process so we didn't make a mess of the floor. So once you've been through your couple steps of wet sanding, depending on your boat and how aggressive you need to be, um, the next step is to start to bring out that shine. Now we've brought it all the way to, it was a 1500, Sam? Yep. Okay, so we've got the whole boat leveled out to a 1500, and now we are going to use our Buff Magic buffing compound, which you see here. Now this is a variable grit compound, and when you work with this, the key is slow and steady. If you use it too quickly and move at too high of a speed, this is gonna break down really, really fast. So we wanna slow into it and work through it. Sam's gonna show us the process of properly using this. We have our Surehold rotary tool here. This is a professional grade tool. Key with these is you wanna keep them moving. Again, he's gonna show us the pattern with that. We do have a pro dual action, but in the essence of speed and wanting to get the best possible shine and because we were wet sanding, we're going all the way to the rotary. To make things simple, we name our pads to match the compound. This is our Buff Magic pad. And from there, we've got the Buff Magic pad, the tool, and the Buff Magic. You're gonna need a chip brush to put the product on. And from there, I'm gonna give it over to Sam, who's gonna take you through the process. Sure, absolutely. Okay. All right, so when using Buff Magic, it comes out as a little bit thicker paste. I just take my chip brush, and I like to paint it in X's. And you gotta remember that a little bit of Buff Magic goes a long way. This is a very strong, very thick compound. So I like to work about two X's worth of section. You just have to paint it on nice and thin. Now that we've got that painted on there, we gotta grab everything we need to buff the boat. First things first is safety. Very good to have my glasses. And then I'll need the rotary polisher there you go. and a nice clean pad, but we're gonna make sure it's really clean by grabbing one of our scrubbing pads. You can use this or a spur. I've got my polisher set at this lowest speed setting and what we're gonna do is fluff it and make sure that everything is clean. There should be no debris in there and it's clean and ready to go. And set this off to the side. Now, when using this type of polisher, you have to keep this machine moving. This will create a lot of heat on a fixed surface. It won't have to worry about it as long as you move it back and forth and up and down in a working pattern. Start by the machine pressing directly against the surface, smear the product around just a little bit, and set your speed setting up to around 1600 to start. And go ahead and pull the trigger. Now, when using Buff Magic with the rotary tool, you want to make sure to keep the tool moving at all times, but not in a circular motion. You want to work in a two foot square area, and we want to move the tool left to right, lowering it just a little bit in overlapping motions as you work across your area. Once you've reached the bottom, now we're going to do that same area, working up and down, again in parallel, linear, overlapping motion. Using just the weight of the machine on a horizontal surface, or just light pressure on a vertical surface. You want to buff until the compound begins to disappear and the surface gloss begins to show. Remember, we are trying to pop out that shine from the oxidation. Depending on the hardness of the gel coat and the depth of the oxidation, you may need to reapply the buff magic and make an additional pass or two. Looks like you're getting a really nice shine out of this. Hey Barry, you want to come over and take your first gloss meter reading? Okay, let's take a look and see how we're doing here. So, uh, feeling really smooth. It's looking really, really glossy. Let's take out our uh, electronic gloss meter, turn it on, make sure that we're zeroed to uh, 90, which we are. And so we're looking at, we, we got a gloss reading right here in the, in the 90, 91 range. Now something like this is almost more than you can expect from a boat of this age that's been out in the harsh Bahamian sun, never garage kept. So this Sam is looking 
really, really good. Now let's talk about how we can do this with our at home gloss meter using one of our bottles. And again, you're gonna set this up to the side of the boat. You're gonna look at it from about a 45 degree angle. And now I can see all the way to the cap and I can even make out our logo in the top black area. And it's pretty, pretty crisp. So if you know that you could see all the way to the cap and you could start to make out that logo, you know you're in the high 80s to low 90s and you're really getting the boat back to where it needs to be. Now, obviously you're not wet sanding a boat that's brand new because it shouldn't need it with the oxidation, but a boat that's of this age, this is looking really, really good and I'm really happy with the process we have set up here. So I'm gonna step away and let Sam finish up the rest of the boat and then we're gonna come back and take a look and see how if there's any ghosting left from any of the lettering and talk about what came out and what's left to do. Okay, so at this point you can see that Sam has finished up with the buffing of the hull sides and it's really turned out really, really well. Um, we're getting numbers in the mid 80s to low 90s, depending where it's been. And again, this boat's been out in the harsh Bahamian sun for years and years and years. Um, so this section's looking really, really good. Um, there were three different names on this boat. Our name over the summer, the last name prior to that was on it for about two to three years and the name that was on it for almost 10 years. And um, the name that was on it the longest, you could see is still ghosted in here a little bit, but the other two came out totally. So from where we were, they're totally, totally gone. And this one I would expect over some time out in the sun and maybe another buffing in about six to eight months from now, that should all fade to match because this original section has never really seen sunlight. So once it gets out in the sunlight, it should catch up with the rest of the boat and begin to fade in. If something like that happens on your boat because the name's been there for many, many years, you either have to have some patience and wait for the sunlight to help fade it back in or look at doing some sort of logo name that will cover it or a partial wrap. There's a lot of different options. But outside of that, the rest of it is just very, very glossy, looking really, really good. The next step you would do when you're all done buffing is you're gonna to wanna to put on a protective coat, something like our Pro Polish Wax, and this is gonna to help to seal and protect, but we're not ready to do that yet because we have a lot more work to do on the boat and that's gonna be one of the last things we do. For now, we're gonna get back started into finishing the rest of the wet sanding for the rest of the interior of the boat and we'll see how that goes over the next couple days. Hey guys, today we are down at Alberry Brothers, Florida and we came down here to pick up some new swim platforms that they didn't do back in the Bahamas back in the day. Uh, we had that little one that you saw us that we took off the boat and I have the nice. pleasure of being joined by uh, Jeffrey Lichterman who is the owner of Alberry, Florida here and um, He's got our swim platforms all laid out and getting them all set for us. These are really cool. These are a oversized fiberglass piece. We're gonna do one on either side of the engine with some beautiful undermount ladders. So unlike the old one where you used to sit on top of the ladder when you're hanging off the back of the boat, uh, the ladder won't be in your way. This is gonna make the boat just an absolute snorkeling machine. Now, um, before we get into the swim platforms, how long has Alberry been building in the United States now? About 15 years. About 15 years? Yeah, almost 400 uh, boats. Almost 400 boats, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that, that's amazing. And which models are you making here? We make the 33, 27, 23, and 20. And 20, cool. And now, um, these swim platforms, I'm really excited to add to our old 23 that we're restoring. And I noticed that you had a 23, you guys are in the middle of restoring, that's almost the same year as ours. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd love to go over there and show that to everybody. And if you could kind of then maybe show us what we need to know about putting these on our boat. How's Glad that sound? To. Okay. Glad to. Great. Good, we'll head over that way. Okay, Barry, when you uh, get your swim platform to the boat, okay. first of all, we're going to provide you with some hardware. This is like a big washer. You're going to put it across the top like so, okay. and this is gonna spread the load so it doesn't point load on each bolt. Okay. Okay. Uh, in general, it goes right here. That's obvious, but there's a little bit of fudging to do. Okay. One is you want it up as high as you can possibly get it 
so the ladder's not dragging in the water, particularly when you hit the gas and your, you know, your bow's up a little right. bit. So get it up as tight as you can to this. Second consideration is you want to through bolt these top three bolts because all the load is there. So you want to be able to get a washer and a nut below your splash well on the inside. Okay. So if you've got to come down a little bit, that's okay. Just take that into consideration where this lines up. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now we're at your mold facility where you're laying up the boats. And before you tell me about this process that's going on behind us, um, tell me a little bit about the history of Alberry um, in the Bahamas and, and what, yeah. what, you know, why people have this fascination with this boat and, and, and the affinity for it. Sure. Uh, so the Albury, this particular branch, the Albury Brothers family have been building boats for three generations on Man of War, uh, okay. over 60 years. Uh, and uh, I guess why people have the fascination is because as Americans went to Abaco, they experienced the boats through the uh, rental fleets there. Okay. And they're just really well-built, well-balanced, honest riding boats. And they just cruise through the chop with uh, a beautiful soft ride, lots of confidence when it's rough and, and very stable. Okay. And all those same boat building techniques, building it up, laying it by hand, you're doing yeah. still here. We sure are. In fact, I went over and wrote the cookbook, built a boat with them, okay. wrote down every single minor detail, brought it back here, and we laminated everything on boards, and we followed that same recipe to this day. Well, again, thank you for showing us around. I really appreciate it. You guys are building just absolutely beautiful boats, and. Uh, I got one to get back to to start uh, getting the swim platforms fitted on it today. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks, Barry. Hey, guys. We made the trip over to the west coast of Florida and I'm really excited because today I'm going to get to see all the hard work that Bobby at Bird's Isle Marine put into making the changes to the T-top for us. We're over at Line X of Sarasota and we're going to be meeting with our friend Brian Landere, who's the proprietor of this business. Hey Brian. Hey, good morning Barry. Good morning. Thank nice you for see having you. us. Absolutely. Now I know you picked up our top and all the framework from Bird's Isle Marine yep. and they did everything to prep it. I haven't seen it yet so I'm really excited to see that and I'm really excited to see all the prep work you put into it and what we're going to be doing in this very special coating. Yeah, we have a, a new system called Line-X Ultra that we're using on a, a lot of the aluminum work on new boats. Okay. And we've got your T-top prepped and uh, ready to start the application. Um, if you want to take a look, we can walk over to the shop next door and check it out. Yeah, let's go do that. Okay. Thank you. You got it. Well, here's my top. I see the new handrails he added to it. Uh, but I, I think you missed the memo. We didn't want sure hold red. We're looking for white. What's going on here? I, I thought we were going to do pink. We're trying to <laughs> Yeah, Barry, this is, uh, this is where the magic happens. Uh, we got Cameron and Ivan in here uh, prepping your top for the Line-X Ultra. OK. Um, and what we have, we have a corrosion resistant primer system uh, that we put underneath the Line-X. OK. So that's uh, the red that I'm seeing. That's the red that you're seeing. OK. And before you put that on, what had to be done when you got the top? from the other coast? We sandblast the top. Okay. Um, we do an acid wash to remove any contaminants. Okay. Um, we do a conversion wash on it, which is your first layer of corrosion protection. Okay. And then we'd use the Line-X primer. Okay, so we've already had three, four steps up until this point. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, uh, with salt water, you're, you're trying to fight corrosion, and um, should you damage the Line-X, this provides a layer underneath to help prevent that corrosion spread that you see with, say, damaged powder coating. Okay. And so they're getting, as you explained to me, all the, the burrs and getting it prepped to be painted with the, what's the final coat? Yeah, the Line-X Ultra is different than what you see in truck beds. It's a different okay. chemistry. Okay. Um, it's a full thickness UV system. Okay. And uh, it sprays out differently. It's very refined. So what we're doing here is we're sanding it to, to make sure that nothing shows through as much as possible. And then also behind us here, we've got all of our other metalwork parts. You had no issues with any of these. We're going to be able yep. to do the same process with all of these. Yes. From our new uh, footrail to the light housings and even the seating. 
yep. we're going to be all good. Great. Now, do you have a, uh, a finished sample somewhere of what the white's going to look like for me to see? Um, I do. Over in our showroom. I'd be okay. happy to walk you over there and, and we can take a look. Okay. And then they're going to spray this today? Yes. And how long will that take? Um, that'll take, the spraying's about two hours to get it done on the top. Okay. So take me and show me what you got in the showroom uh, and then we'll leave them finish up the top. You got it. Okay. Brian, this is a beautiful showroom you've got here, and I see, um, you know, the Linex name everywhere. And I know Linex from the truck beds, but you were telling me over the phone this is actually different what you're doing to our boat than what you normally spray in a truck bed. What's the differences? It is, um, Barry. We have two materials uh, that are full thickness UV systems. Okay. We have one that's designed to be thicker. Uh, it's our body armor material. Okay. And we typically would use this on a boat deck. Okay. Where you're going to receive heavy abuse like a truck bed. Okay. And we have our newest one called Linex Ultra, which is what you're getting on the T-top. And we offer this in white and black and in different shades of gray for standard pricing. Our body armor material is available in any color. Okay, so, so no more just black like the truck liners. We can pretty much get this color match to anything that we want. Can. Okay, yeah. for us, we're, we're good with white. Yep. Now, when you do this and you spray this on our T-top stuff, um, the reason that there's a benefit to this versus like spraying a powder coat is that it's not going to chip like it, correct? Yeah, it's more chip resistant. It's more chip resistant. The, the thickness is uh, typically about double to triple what powder coating is. Okay. And we do have that primer protection underneath, which right. helps prevent corrosion spread. And it's more flexible. It's more flexible. You could really dent it and it's not going to crack because okay. of the flexibility. And then one nice thing is it's repairable. It is repairable because I know powder yeah. coat isn't. Yeah, the materials, um, there's no solvents in them. Okay. So I'm able to, to ship the materials uh, US 50 states wide for okay. repair. You can use the same material that we spray with as a repair. That is awesome. Well, thank you very much for having us. I'm really excited to get Bear. that back to the other coast. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna head down to Birds All Marine when it gets back there and see how they stretch the final piece on top and put that back onto the boat. So uh, let's make the trip back to the East Coast and see what's next. The first thing I noticed when I arrived back at Birds All Marine was how good the white Linex finish turned out. I got to see all the small parts as the Birds All team had begun to assemble them. Before I arrived that day, they started the initial layout on the canvas for the T-top. Now it was time to begin to tighten it up using a clamp and a foot pedal. They worked their way around the entire top, stretching, screwing, and sandwiching the canvas between the frame and the trim band in a nice bead of adhesive. Once the canvas top was extremely tight and secure, the excess material was trimmed, along with the excess adhesive being cleaned up. The next step was to hoist the newly finished top back onto the all bear. All the mounting pads were secured with 5200 and stainless steel through bolts. From there, the seat frame was mounted, also using 5200 and stainless steel through bolts. The team then measured and worked with me to find the optimal placement for the new footrest. I have to say I'm really happy we were able to salvage all the original pipe work. With the new Linex coating, the laceless canvas, the new storage box, spreader lights, and the new upholstery, the work they did here at Birdsall is absolutely fantastic. During the next phase of Project SureFun, the Albee Brothers is dropped off at Marine Customs Unlimited for custom paintwork and a tricked out dash panel. Barry meets with the professionals at Castaway Customs to have Sea Deck cut and placed into the deck. And the experts from Linco Marine visit Surehold Studios and fit and install brand new trim tabs. 
Come on, guys. They already know to subscribe. Let's keep this nice and clean.